But this guy intrigues me more than any other player because it feels to me the teams, executives, talent evaluators, etc., are more split on him than maybe any player I can remember in a long, long time. And that is Cole Anthony. Cole Anthony was, for the longest time, the best player in that class. I mean, from the time they were little. you knew we I knew Cole Anthony's name when he was 13 years old, okay? Cole Anthony then lived up and surpassed most all expectations while he was a high school basketball player. He then went and played amongst the best of the best in all those games. He played in the McDonald's game. He was the MVP. He played in the Jordan brand game. He was the MVP. He played in the Hoop Summit. He was the MVP. <laughs> he was like the most sure thing this guy is going to be a big NBA star, uh, you know, that you can get when you when you team up all of that, right? And then you go play, they put these collections together, all the best guys, and you're the best guy every time. Every time. He was the best guy at McDonald's. He was the best guy at Jordan. He was the best guy at the Hoop Summit. It's like, okay, this is pretty, you know, it's pretty easy stuff to figure out here. And then he went to North Carolina. That season was a disaster. The team sucked. He did not have, the numbers are fine, but they're not efficient at all. All right. And, And he got injured and missed like whatever it was, 11 games in the middle of it. And then obviously we didn't see, you know, they weren't going to the NCAA tournament anyway, right? So there's a couple of things here. To me, I look at a guy like this and I say, all right, this is a down draft. This guy has infinitely more star potential than a lot of guys ranked ahead of him, all right? Is there a chance he busts out? I think very, 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 very low, all right? I watched an interview with this kid about two weeks ago about all the work he's done community service-wise during the quarantine and all the coronavirus and all this kind of stuff. Obviously, we know his father was a broadcaster. His mom was a lawyer and then now, like, is a filmmaker. I mean, like, this guy, this guy's got great bloodlines, right? We know the parents, right, that are out there. And I watched this interview with him. This kid has an unbelievable head on his shoulders. Like, he just seems like a wise kid. I found him to be so likable. I really did. And I'm like, geez, man. Like, you listen to this kid talk. He talks about how much uh, how much work he's done in the community and how important that is to him and everything else. Just seems. And, and you know, I juxtapose that against the way people talk about him, right? Doesn't make his teammates better. He doesn't, you know, pass well. He doesn't have great vision. He doesn't have this. Bad shot that. selection. Yeah, you hear bad a lot, shot which is selection, true. all this kind yeah. of stuff. But now, all right, now let me play the defense on this. Number one. This guy was the best of the best every time he played until that one year in college, which was a goofy year in college anyway. Number two, where are the other North Carolina guys on these draft boards? (laughs) As far as I know, he was playing with a bunch of nothing. Like, (laughs) where are they? There's nobody. There's not one guy. Uh, Like, so he was, the expectation was that he was like, he's going to be like John Morant at Murray State and he's just going to lift up the entire team. You can't do that in the ACC. You can't have one awesome guy. And and this whole, like, he doesn't really make players better. He doesn't really have the vision. I went back and watched his highlights. You know what North Carolina did? They stood around all the time. I sit there and I watch their offense, and I say, this is abysmal. Because they couldn't get stopped, so they couldn't get out and run. Watch and they also half- had two bigs in the half court, too. Their half court spacing, offense yeah. is atrocious on these highlights. Atrocious. They're all standing around waiting for Cole Anthony to do something. And then he goes seven for 19 in the game. And it's like, but those seven, you see something that other guys don't have. They just don't. And it used to be the combo guard was a bad thing. Like that was like uh, something like that would be stamped on your head, like a combo, uh, like a, like a scarlet letter. That's just not so anymore. It's, it's actually, uh, great to be a combo guard especially he's 6'3 so he's not a you're not a you know he's not a tiny guy out there 
The other thing is, I watch him and I say, this is a guy that will be so much better in the NBA than in the college game. Uh, the game that gets up and down, which most teams are playing now, he's built for that. And he can be dynamite. And so I think he's way too low on those boards. In a year that I don't love a lot of draft prospects, I would take a crack at him based upon, I, I would be able to overlook that North Carolina season and say, this dude from the time he was 13 to the time he was 19 was the best. And he went and played against all the best guys and was always considered the best guy. So, like, what the hell happened here? I blame college basketball and Carolina more than I do the kid. I love it. Scout with Verno. There you go. That, that You know what, man? Like, if I... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you got me saying, like, why do I have him only 15th on my board? Because I'll tell you what, Chris, I've had a lot of those arguments with myself about Cole Anthony in recent months. And there's certain guys in this year's draft that I, I'm trying to get him higher on my board because I think this year it could be one of those years in which the best players are the players drafted outside the top yep. 10. It could be one of those years. We've seen it happen before, and it could be happening again right in front of us. And, and I look at Cole Anthony. I look at the guy I'm going to mention, Tyrell Terry, a number of others, Desmond Bain, who we talked about last week. There's just a lot of guys this year that I'm like, I like them just as much as LaMelo Ball, as Anthony Edwards, as some of the guys that are going to go top five. And, you know, Edwards might in a vacuum have higher upside than a Cole Anthony. He's six foot five and, you know, a brick house and he can do stuff off the dribble for you. He could be a better defender than Cole Anthony. But it's not like with Cole Anthony, he doesn't hustle on defense. No. Even though, even though he's only 6'3", he grinds on the defensive end of he the floor. He blocks guys at the rim. I mean, like we I, saw, I saw some I mean, of these highlights, the way, and I was like, The guy Jesus. I'd compare him to is somebody like Fred Van Vliet. Fred Van Vliet in college, four years of college, was undersized. He is undersized. Yeah. But he battles on defense yeah. and has become a guy you can't pick on for the Raptors. And Cole Anthony, he's a bit thinner. Uh, than a Van Vliet, but you know, he with goes that type hard. Of in, he yeah, goes that type of hard. intensity, you can survive. You can survive. Yeah. The other and, thing is, Kev, you know, the other thing when I watch his highlights, you remember how we were talking about how Rondo doesn't jump on his threes? He does sometimes, but a lot of times he just takes that set shot. He does not like waste a lot of energy on that three. And I think that kid's going to be able to knock down NBA threes. Yeah, man. I, I think, I think Colin, look, he shot 30. 38% from the field. He shot 40% from two, 35% from three, 75% from the line. He was very, very inefficient last year for That's North right. Carolina. And scouts and execs, they fall on one side or the other. Yep. The people who are supporters of him, as you're arguing for, say, look at the spacing he had. He yep. was not able to get to the rim. They point to situations in which he did have space, and they're like, look how good he was in, he was in these scenarios. The people who are against him as a player say he's only six foot three. He's limited with size. The shot selection is poor. The inefficiency is there. He's not a true playmaker. What is he for you any more than like a spark plug off your bench? That there's two different sides and two different ways of viewing him. And that and I've sort of fallen somewhere in the middle there so far with where I have him ranked at 15th. But there's no denying that for a guy who could go outside the top 10. He could. He has high steel potential. Yeah, yeah at well, the least, there's high look, steel potential. If I told you Cole Anthony in five years is wearing an NBA All Star uniform, that would not be insane. And it just is for a lot of these guys. They're not going to be All Star. Could, could he become? Not be. Could he become like Austin Rivers though? A good you know role player. That's right. You know yes. And he could become Austin Rivers, and those that's what people worry about the, on the side that are like, eh, I'll let someone else gamble on him. That's right. But you're, you're saying maybe he becomes a Kemba Walker. I think his ceiling is way higher. I think everybody admits that. If it all worked, his ceiling is way higher than most of his peers. It, this gets to what we were talking about with Christian Wood. How do you value, how do you weigh risk? That's right. How do you weigh risk? And some teams might and be this more year, to that's what I would tell you. That's why this year is different to me. In a normal year, I'd be like, eh, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But in this year, shit. If I could get a guy that might be an all-star, yeah. I could you could see him. I watch his highlights and I go, I could see that dude scoring 30 points in an NBA game. Easy. Oh, yeah. Easy. No doubt. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm with you.
And how many guys do I watch their tape? And I go, yeah, that guy's going to score 30 points in an NBA game. Like, I, you, like, that dude was so good for so long. And again, I know that these all-star games aren't the end-all, be-all. I'm not trying to make them to be. But just understand, he was always considered the best guard. Always. And, he, and then when he played against all the best of the best, he was always the best guy. 